Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur video. We're going to have a look at whether next 10 to 14 days for today's Spur video day 10 is going to take us to the 28th of January and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. It says GFS and ECM on summers over a couple of weeks and have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks gets us well into February. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say the first video is our 6am upload uh, and we'll also uh, release the ECM uh, WF 40, 30 day slash 42 day uh, look out for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Thank you so much everybody. Please like, share, subscribe and hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Right, we'll begin with CT then. So central temperature is still stand, uh, standing at 5.5. That's an anomaly of uh, 2 degrees above average, adding provisional to the 17th of uh, January to yesterday. That should go under uh, 5 degrees in the next few days. Um, so we're having frosty nights, having relatively mild days, so we're not fogging up as much uh, with this high pressure as was anticipated a few days ago. So a few days ago, it's anticipated that fog will become widespread, freezing fog lingering all day. And uh, it's the fact of the matter that as our snow days have dwindled away to virtually nothing uh, over the past 10, 20 years, so to have our fog days. So 20, 30 years ago, this high pressure I've been sat under would probably have filled up with freezing fog. And, uh, you know, it would have been a really, really cold high pressure. We are still getting the frosty nights uh, with this, but by day, the sun you know, is out widely, it lifts the temperature up, because it's not a cold ridge fundamentally, it's a warm ridge built up from the Azores. So although there's an inversion going on, you know, it's not got a cold upper air temperature core with it, it's actually a warm uh, ridge of high pressure. And so all these factors are combining, lack of fog, and, you know, sunny days, they're all combining to mean that daytime temperatures are relatively um, okay. You know, they're holding up. Uh, they're not overly cold. It's not overly cold by day. By night, it is cold. So having cold nights with relatively mild days, you know, in the sunshine are setting one another. And so the temperature is only very, very slowly dropping away. However, having said all of that, I think this will go under five degrees every next few days. So this should go down into the fours. You know, uh, by the time we get through to the weekend. We'll see. I think it will. And we may get a downwards correction as well. Quite a big downwards correction. That tends to happen when you have, like, a, quite a frosty month. Uh, so it could be that we're already in the fours. Uh, you know, we might already be somewhere around 4.9 in reality. Um, once you take into the fact that we have a downwards correction. But anyway, uh, we'll keep an eye on how that goes over the next few days. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles next couple of weeks. Uh, looking at London today, so red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off above average with those upper air temperatures. Man, that's what I was talking about, We're having an inversion. So fundamentally, it's a warm ridge of high pressure, a mild ridge of high pressure, just on the surface. The heat radiates away into space, and it gets colder, especially so at night. Now, we are going to have this little cold snap coming up around Thursday. It's like a one or two day one, but it does get quite cold with both the upper air temperature and the surface temperature as we go through to Thursday, and then the upper air temperatures lift up again as we move into the weekend and into the path next week. Final days of January into February, loads of scatter, so um, check this out, you know, we've got very, very mild ensemble members up here, including today's GFS operational run, midnight and 6 at operational run, interesting, we've still got our colder days down here, and, and the overall trend with the ensemble mean, which is the white line, is probably still turn things a little bit colder, into the beginning of February from an upper air temperature perspective. So, um, like, the end of January, beginning of February, still up in the air. Precipitation-wise, completely dry for London, more or less until around the 27th uh, of uh, January, so nearly like a week uh, uh, to 10 days of... <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry, everybody, nearly like a week to 10 days of continuously dry weather. Maybe hinting at going more unsettled, though. By the beginning of February, could we get a return of the West Indies? Let's have a look at the sea level pressure. It is beginning to lower uh, right at uh, the end of the month. So starting off with very high pressure at the moment, around 1,040 millibars. And then just a gradual lowering of pressure now beginning to appear towards the beginning of February. Maybe the Atlantic is going to come back and push this high pressure out of the way. Uh, Temperature-wise, uh, looking like that. So, uh, starting off about average with temperatures. There's a little cold snap around Thursday to Friday. 
Uh, and then it looks like the trend overall is to start to get milder, actually, as we go to the end of January and the beginning of February, albeit again with a lot of scattered cold on some members down there, mild on some members up there. Snow road looks like that, virtually nothing, uh, nothing doing with snow over the next week, 10 days. It might be one of the most snowless winters on record, if not being most snowless winter on record now, I think, for some southern, eastern parts of the country anyway. By the beginning of February, there are one or two snow spikes appearing. It's a very, very long way off, though, and uh, unreliable. If we go back here and have a look at the extended uh, upper air temperature amplification ensembles, they look like that. So there might still be that cooling trend through the first uh, week of February, also, um, not as clearly as it was a couple of days ago, though, uh, and a lot of scatter within uh, there as well. It does look like it gets more unsettled, though, as we go further on into uh, February. Sea level pressure, uh, the extended sea level pressure looks like that. So, again, starting off with relatively high pressure, and then pressure starts to go lower uh, a little bit later on. Two metre temperatures extended, looking like this. So, uh, again, uh, coldest weather is around there. And probably a bit of a warming trend, if anything, as we move on into February. Snow road looks like that, uh, extended. So, again, no snow until the very least the very end of January. More snow spikes appearing as we go further on into February. But, of course, that's very extended and unreliable. Temperature anomalies from the 18th to 20th of January going to be above average in the north and cold on average in the south. Well, only slightly colder than average show for the south. And precipitation anomalies from the 18th to 26th of January, uh, they're going to be drier than normal as well. The latest wind map from earthnullschool.net shows that uh, the high pressure beginning to slip more towards Germany and allowing slightly more of an Atlantic influence in today. However, colder air is going to be pushing southwards with a new area of high pressure by around Thursday. So that's how the UK Met Euro looks as get to midnight on Friday. We're under high pressure, mainly dry, cold at that point into weekend. England and Wales probably keeping it quite cold under the ridge of high pressure. Meanwhile, further northwards, we have those westy winds. They're going to bring mild and cloudy weather to northern half of the country. No real changes as we get to the end of the UK Met run, actually. Just 25th of January. Um, with high pressure across England and Wales, uh, so probably still cold. There might be frost and fog. As I say, we're not getting as much fog as this with this setup as you might have expected. Um, but it could be frost and fog for England and Wales. Meanwhile, Scotland and Northern Ireland in those west south westy winds, uh, so mild and cloudy up there. Icon looks like this again high pressure, it's cold ridge, uh, dominating over at the end of week into weekend. Scotland will be milder with westy winds bringing outbreaks rain. In England and Wales could be, um, could have some frost anyway, mainly dry in all areas. And then moving up to the end of the Icon run, which again gets to the 25th of January, high pressure sort of sitting there in the south, keeping things mainly dry there, milder and a little bit wetter further north. Now, GS Vest is beginning to hint a bit of a change, so let's have a look at this again. High pressure dominates on Friday and into the weekend with a risk of some overnight frost, especially for the south. Early next week, we keep high pressure going with more frost there. Uh, meanwhile, further north, it begins to go a little bit more unsettled. This area of low pressure begins to rain into the part of Scotland. And very gradually, as we get towards day 10 and beyond it, we do start to introduce a rather more uh, rather more of an Atlantic flow. Or we try to, anyway. So, so we try to turn it more unsettled with low pressure out to the northwest, pushing this high pressure south. It's a very mild setup, by the way, for the end of January, beginning of February. The air is rejecting from the Azores again. So think what we had at the New Year. Probably not quite as warm as that, but um, that's a very mild sort of setup with a long fetch southwesterly. And uh, we finish up looking like that on the 3rd of February. So the Atlantic is having a good go at staging an attack. Now, the 6Z takes that even further. So uh, again, high pressure dominates where we bring loads of dry and quite cold weather at the end of the week. It's cold for the south, anyway, uh, with overnight frost. Not sure about fog. Um, uh, that, so, so that carries on into the early part of next week with this ridge of high pressure. Uh, but again, the 6 Z does try and break that down after day 10 and turns us more unsettled. Just a hint, perhaps, that by the very end of January, beginning of February, the westerners start to come back. It begins to turn a little bit wetter and windier, particularly so for more northern and western areas. But this is a long way out, you know, and certainly within, like, the next um, week, probably the next 10 days, high pressure does remain in control of the weather. GM uh, looks like that. Again, high pressure keeps it mainly dry, uh, cold for the south with overnight frost probably into the weekend. Could be some fog. 
Uh, further north, mild uh, uh, there. And then we go into next week, and the Geo do something a bit different, tries to get high pressure going towards Scandinavia. I'm dubious about that, but does actually pull in a little bit of an easterly wind through next week, which would be quite cold off the continent. So uh, the GM, that's the coldest of the uh, models today. Um, increasingly uh, frosty, I think, with high pressure dominating over and uh, to the northeast of the country. Uh, ECM looks like this. Again, high pressure is... How many times have I said high pressure with this? High pressure keeps it mainly dry. And uh, certainly for the south, anyway, there will be overnight frost at the end of the week and into the weekend. Uh, and then the ECM just keeps that high pressure going. Look at this. Absolutely amazing, really, the persistence of this high pressure with the ECM. No suggestion whatsoever that the high pressure is being eroded, uh, like the GFS is trying to do up to day 10. So um, just the high pressure GFS goes on right the way up to uh up to day 10 with the ecm so quite remarkable if this was like middle of summer if this is like uh july rather than january this would be an all-time one of the all-time classics hot dry summer months actually would be like a drought month uh drought pattern that's set up here of course it's only january it's not july so <laughs> uh but uh again some of you i'm sure will be wondering uh whether this high pressure is still in business in uh july or whether you know, it'll be gone and not to be seen again. We'll see when we get to that uh, period, of course. Uh, right, precipitation forecast based on that uh, ECM run from Chester.com. A few wintry showers in the far north of Scotland on Thursday. Otherwise, it's completely dry, really. And the dry weather goes on as well uh, with all of that high pressure, as you'd expect. Just continuously dry weather in the next 10 days. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets to 28 for January. 18 members of the ECM Ensemble still with that big area of high pressure dominating the weather uh, towards the end of January. Uh, 14, take high pressure just a little bit further southwards, start to hint at um, low pressure beginning to develop to north of Scotland. So if Scotland turning a little bit more unsound, otherwise it's still dominated by high pressure though. 10 with a high pressure to our south. Low pressure is to the north. A bit more of a westerly uh, setting in with that. 6 with high pressure. Again, uh, to the north. And winds going into more of an easterly direction. That's a rather colder scenario, especially so for the south. And then 3 with a high pressure. Rather more towards the northwest. Again, that could be pulling in wind from a bit of a northeasterly type direction. So those are the two colder solutions. Generally, looks like high pressure still in business at uh, day 10. In two weeks' time, though, hints of a bit of a change. This is the 2nd of February. 30 members of the ECL ensembles with low pressure to the north and high pressure slipping south. So that's definitely hinting that high pressure is beginning to break as lower pressure diverts in the north or to the north. And then 21 take the high pressure even further away towards the southwest is low pressure again to the north. And that hints even more at a change towards something rather more unsettled. So could we start to get things a bit more unsettled into the beginning of, of February, the return of the Westerlies? Finally, CFSB2, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 18th to 24th of January. The coming week, again, is dominated by high pressure. Week 2 is going to be the 25th, 31st of January, still with that high pressure, although pulling perhaps a little bit more towards the west. Week 3 sees a change. It's the 1st to the 7th of February, with low pressure in off the Atlantic. That turns us more unsettled. We'll bring some rain, perhaps even to the south with that. And then uh, week four, also not so well south, but a bit different week four. This is the 8th to the 14th of February, with low pressure sort of elongating down the western side of Europe. High pressure pulls a long way out into the Atlantic. We finally get rid of the high, that going over towards Newfoundland. And setting up high pressure towards Scandinavia. So uh, the reason this... Um, trough is elongating down here with the jet stream is because we've got high pressure blocking over Scandinavia trying to pull in easterly winds so um that's a big that's a big big change uh, by week four which is the 8th to 14th of february and could hint at something colder begin to move in from east but of course that is a very 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 long way out and uh isn't to be relied upon Temperature knowledge of CFS for week one, 18th, 24th February. Our cold average for England and Wales, mild on average for Scotland. 
Uh, week two is also colder than average with its high pressure, 25th of January 31st, uh, particularly again for England and Wales. This is primarily down to overnight frost, of course. Daytime temperatures aren't that cold. Um, week three is the 1st of December, February. A milder and more unsettled month. And then week four, just seems that it might be starting to go a bit colder again, 8 to 14th February. So the CFS is quite cold today with its temperature anomalies, but it's probably, you know, it's probably just thrown one out there and tomorrow it will be back to solidly milder than average again. We'll see. Uh, right, if you've enjoyed the video, then please give smash the like button. Thank you so much to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, don't forget to your friends and family to subscribe. Uh, drop a comment let us know if you've got missed all of our videos. Thank you so much. Uh, right, we're done then with today's piece. Just tell us coming up tomorrow. Uh, 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the USA forecast and a 10 to 14 day. Uh, you'll notice a complete absence of snow watch uh, this season. So, you know, will we get to do any? I've uh, done two, I think, <laughs> so far. But, um, no, it's been a really, really bad season for snow watch. I wonder when we will get to do a snow watch. It would be nice if I could do one, but... You know, there's no point doing it if there's no snow on the horizon or not, you know, uh, widely anyway. So, uh, the wait goes on, doesn't it? Wait goes on for so much. I would love to be able to bring you some snow watches. But so far, the weather gods are not playing ball. And uh, snow watch, you know, very conspicuous by its absence. In this supposedly so-called winter. Right, we're done then. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more. But for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.